Hello, we are the Strongout System and welcome to the next video of Power to the Plurals. We are the founders of the Plural Association, a registered nonprofit for people with dissociative identity disorder and all other forms of plurality. This video contains out of two parts. The first part is about our personal experience with Olaf van der Hart while we met him at the conference that we visited last year, which was about um, early childhood trauma and the theory of structural dissociation. The second part of this video is about the disciplinary hearing in which Ulna von der Hart lost his license and um, was convicted that he can never uh, practice psychology um, again. In this video, I'm not going to explain what the theory of structural dissociation is. If you want to know, I highly suggest um, you check out the work by um, System Speak podcast or, or other resources. Um, we are personally not a fan of this theory, but I'm not going to explain in this video what the theory is about. Um, I do want to point out at the beginning of this video that we wrote an article last year after visiting this conference. That article is called Why the Theory of Structural Dissociation is Ableist. You can find that article on our website, powertotheplurals.com, and I highly suggest um, you read that first before you watch this video, whether you know nothing about this theory or you think you know a lot about it. And if you're interested on the System Speak podcast, there is more elaboration on this as well. So much was said about this, but not everything everything was set. In this video, we hope to complete the circle and share everything um, that happened. So I didn't make this video earlier because I felt like I didn't want to ruin this man's career, but he ruined his own career. Um, and so, yeah, uh, now I feel I can speak up and I should. Um, also because this news has only been published in Dutch, it seems, and it has been kept very low on the radar. This happened at the end of 2019 and I didn't find out until June 2020. This is editing me. Turns out not everyone knows yet that he ruined his own career, as he is speaking June 20th in the year 2020 in Italy. So this is my message to Italy and the rest of the clinical world. Deplatform abusers and predators, especially when you claim to be trauma-informed and treat trauma survivors. It does not look good on you. Thank you for taking our concerns serious in names of plurals worldwide. Let's get into the first part um, of this video, which is the conference. And let me explain that I'm going to go from least problematic to most problematic, so bear with me. The first thing that happened was that we asked him a question. He explained that um, people with fusion integrate are safest. And he also explained that when you get, after you do fusion integration, if someone gets re-traumatized, the fusion integration um, can easily break. And the least coping skills someone has, the easier it breaks. That is why there needs to be a long stabilization phase. So since this is contradicting, people who integrate are safest, but if you get re-traumatized, the integration disappears. We asked him where he got this data from. And he explained that he got this data only from his personal clinical observation. And to me, that is not fair if you make such a big claim that people are safer when they are completely fusion integrated and, and um, assimilated to what they deem normal. Um, you got to have some good proof for me for that to make sense. And so he only had his clinical observation. And um, what I explained to him was that people who um, experience the re-traumatization or their integration just fails for other reasons, they might not always go back to that therapist. So his clinical observation is incomplete. And he laughed and he said, oh no, people call me really angry. And I thought that really stood out that he said that. So the next part is, um, really intense. Uh, we've tried to record this part multiple times now. So please keep your protectors closed and make sure you're okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's intense. So Olna von der Hart is on the stage explaining about one of his clients and he mimics this woman who is crying and he calls her hysterical. And he says that she is afraid of her alters dying and she yells at him that he is a murderer 
and instead of him empathizing with this woman's fear and emotions that she's feeling and all the people inside of her who are obviously upset by what is going on um he starts laughing and he hypes up the audience to laugh with him and while we sat there um, surrounded by 500 therapists who now have to treat people with DID, many of whom fear integration, many of whom have people in their systems who as individuals experience or fear that fusion integration is like dying or maybe even murder when it feels like it was forced by an outside therapist. These people now have to go in the field and treat people with DID thinking it's something that is laughable or that is appropriate to laugh about. Then he continued and said that Americans are ignorant for not prolonging the stabilization phase, phase one in the three phase model. Please pay attention to how many times I have said that he wanted to prolong the stabilization phase. Before we move on to the second part of the video where we talk about the disciplinary hearing, um, let me just ask you for uh, a minute of your time where I want to explain to you that with the Plural Association Nonprofit, we are building a warm line for people with associative identity disorder and all other plurals or forms of plurality. The idea is that you can call this warm line and you and your system can share your stories and worries with lived experienced trained plural. We want to offer these calls for free, so um, we want to ask the community to pitch in. You can um, donate starting at $3 once uh, annually or monthly, and it would really help us out if everyone pitches in a little bit, we can make this warm line a reality. We have already over 40 volunteers ready who are willing to take your calls. All they need is training and the platform. So please, if you can, pitch in. If you can't, maybe you know someone, a friend or a safe family member um, who can pitch in. So please, um, if you can, send them to our website, thepluralassociation.org slash donate. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your video. And um, let's move on to the second part of this video, which is about the disciplinary case, which took part at the end of 2019 or that is actually when um, he lost his license i'm sure they spent all year on the case the article that was written about this case said that never before in the netherlands has a professor lost his license in this way a brave woman came forward and shared her story she had a lot of evidence many many emails 250 postcards and uh, medical exam papers. He treated her for 21 years and he let her be stuck in the stabilization phase for 21 years. He said that he could tell how special she was and how deep their connection is as they both lost a brother. In the Netherlands, no touch is allowed between a therapist and uh, their clients, but they touched every session. He touched her every session with long embraces where he said a special phrase to her and she couldn't tell anyone about it. Not even the psychiatrist that briefly observed the therapy. Eventually, they ended up in a fight and he pushed her and broke her wrist. He told her that only he could treat her and that she is such a complex case, heavily traumatized, where she wondered if that was really true. What really stood out to me is that during the hearing, uh, Professor, well, ex-Professor von der Hart said that the woman didn't integrate well enough to be able to really do the trauma work. He also regretted this, but he victim blamed her 
on why she needed 20 years in therapy phase one stabilization without any form of progress. Protocols were not followed and the judge called this the worst because he teaches other people the importance of supervision but didn't follow the protocols or ask for correct supervision himself. He also blamed her for not integrating a model he constructed in his theory that has a success rate of 12.8%. The Dutch DID community was shocked and hurt to find out about this news. Myself, I'm not that surprised, I guess, after the conference. I already didn't trust him, so I guess there's that. But I wanted to point out in this video, it was important to me, to us, to make this video. We felt we had to be silent after what happened at the conference. We felt like it was some sort of exclusive club that we had a one-time inside view in. And what we saw was very, very nasty. So we hope this video um, is a warning to people to keep your therapist accountable to demand that they have good supervision and to demand that progress is measured. And um, yeah, we hope that, that that keeps people safer. Make sure that your boundaries are not crossed and that you keep each other and your system safe as well. Um, it's really important, folks. We lost so many years ourselves to this theory it's a very much followed here in the Netherlands. We were called therapy resistant for not wanting the fusion, fusion integration that is talked about in this theory. And it's really hard to find therapy in the Netherlands that is not based on this theory. I know that's different in the rest of the world. I also know that a lot of you have wonderful therapists who use the good parts of this theory. I just want you to be aware that the speakers behind the scenes are telling a different story and um, and that one of them is has lost his license for the rest of his life after abusing a woman, crossing her boundaries, violating her boundaries, breaking her wrist um, and all sorts of, of really messed up stuff. I have pointed out six examples, but there are 31 in this in this disciplinary hearing. Thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry to be the bringer of bad news. Um, we appreciate the time you invested to learn more about this because we think it is important that you are aware of what is going on in the in the community, in the larger community, the clinical community. And um, we are proud of ourselves for being able to create this video, even though it took so many <laughs> attempts. Um, well done, Stronghold System. And uh, see you next time. Thank you so much for being here with us.